All right, the recorder has started. And uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Help Systems webinar, Speed Dating with Robot Monitor. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> so today's webinar is a short discussion around a highly configurable monitoring tool for Power Server known as Robot Monitor. And today's session is about 30 minutes long. It's mostly live demo. And of course, we are recording and we'll send you the recording at the end of uh, today's presentation. Uh, my name is Chuck Lesinski. I'm the Director of Technical Solutions at Help Systems, and I'm joined today by Mr. Tom Huntington. Good morning, Tom. Well, thank you, Chuck. It's a pleasure to be here with everybody, and I'm um, excited to share yet another um, Help Systems technology. And gosh, you know, we call this speed dating with robot monitor, but it almost feels more like with today in Minnesota, it's 19 degrees and more like speed skating with robot monitor well next next winter we'll do that we'll, we'll change all right it. sounds good yeah. Speed dating. exactly so uh tom let's talk a little bit about why we're doing this I and mean, what are some of the issues that we run into with monitoring sounds good you know i think that you know if you look at uh, the problems that we solve with this product is brings that you know the big thing we do is we bring that central um monitoring back into focus here so that uh, um, we're, you know, we're, we're uh, bringing all your partitions into one spot, you know, solving that problem. Um, you know, we're taking away some of those homegrown things that people have done in the past and, and solving those uh, by building in proactive monitoring. Um, makes you more, you know, threshold monitoring, SLA monitoring, you want to call that. Uh, part of the the opportunity here, and then you know troubleshooting, you know making it easier to find out you know what job, what problem, what even what SQL is causing the problem, so that you're spending less time doing things manually. So you know the benefits is just centralized management, 24 hours a day, and really that ability to to be able to see and and control things that way is is really yeah. kind of the, the big benefit, right? Yeah, Tom, I talk to people almost every week about homegrown tools that were built by somebody 10, 15, 20 years ago that they still have running on their system and they don't know how to make changes to it. They don't understand it and they want to have you know, something that has better documentation. And that's that's kind of the idea. All right, let's kick off our first polling question, Tom. You know, I'm not seeing your slides, Chuck, for some reason. Oh, hang on one second. Let's see if. Or the slides aren't moving forward, maybe. There we go. How's okay. That? I thought it was my end, so I didn't want to say anything, but all right, here we go. First polling question. You know, first of all, we want to know, do you have any monitoring tools in place and select all that apply? You're already using Robot Monitor, so this is a great way of seeing some of the things that you can do with it. We use Performance Navigator from Help Systems. We just use IBM I commands or maybe SQL uh, these days we use the navigator for i um, we built some of our own tools um, i guess we should probably have another in there too but looks like we got a good mix here already um, robot monitor performance navigator uh, good 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 looks looks like things are up there and they're moving around a little bit more so let's see here probably enough time on this poll and let me share the results here chuck so you can see a good portion of the people are, are using Robot Monitor ready, so a good refresh for them. 80% um, also use the Navigator for I, and 60% uh, are using some IBM commands, um, some built-in tools, and of course, Performance Navigator too. So we should probably talk a little bit on what's different there too. Yeah, okay, Tom, we're talking to the, preaching to the choir, so to speak, a little bit. We've got a number of uh, Robot Monitor users on board, and that's great. Yeah, so pretty simple agenda today. We're going to um, introduce you to Robot Monitor and some of the things it can do and talk about uh, five key features. So let's uh, just hop right into the next slide here, Chuck. You know, this is kind of the, you can call it a wheel or um, what, but if you look at what Robot Monitor does, uh, what we kind of miss in here is the fact that it does this for multiple systems all at one time. So you know, I've gotten dashboards for customers where they have, you know, 30 partitions up on one screen in their multi-system view of 
CPU, DASD, you know, average response time, database response time, you know, they're doing SQL monitoring, they're checking their PTFs across their boxes, and they're all and, and building in SLAs with this. So, and then really, you know, things like Power HA, BIOS monitoring, Robot HA, BRMS monitoring, AIX, Linux, uh, MIMIX monitoring, those kind of additional system things that we're responsible for. And then the detail to be able to drill in and see library, IFS, job information, sub information, and be able to even drill further into the actual jobs that are running on the system, who's taking the most resources and be able to see that. Um, and, and then having multiple dashboards. Some other things that we do in here is that, um, you know, what do you want to call it? The, the big dashboard in the sky thing where it can revolve between views uh, right in front of you. So very powerful tool and it's real time. So the big difference between this and Performance Navigator is Performance Navigator is built on collection information from IBM collection tools, which is, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If it's Enmon, you know, it might also be five, 10 minutes. Uh, this is every 30 seconds. And um, it's meant to be the tool that notifies you, warns you, gives you color, those kinds of things. How's that? Enough on that one. Perfect. Perfect. So, and then the centralized aspect of this, of course, is, you know, it's not just IBM I. However, it does require IBM I. I don't want you to walk away from today's webinar and say, oh, I'm going to use Robot Monitor to monitor AIX, but I don't have IBM I. You have to have IBM I, at least one partition of it, and then you can pull in AIX and Linux um, and, you know, the BIOS all into one view. So you can have dashboards that contain AIX and IBM I partitioned side by side looking at CPU. So you get that visualization, that SLA exception notification capabilities. We tie that into a robot alert. There's capabilities to integrate with things like SNMP here. And uh, it's always been a centralized monitoring tool. So I kind of like that off to the right where you have those, you know, 46%, 12%, 126%. You got those really eye-catching numbers to be able to better see from afar what's happening on your system. Then if we go on, um, you know, it's not just about one or two stats that we monitor too. You know, there are other tools out there that are free that um, basically do some things for you, but they don't go to the detail level that you really need on IBM I. People forget, you know, today's IBM I server, it's a database server, it's scale up. It's not like the Windows or Linux server where you have a hundred of these small environments that you're monitoring. It's one big server and you got to go a little deeper. And so we, are, we have over 128 um, metrics that we can monitor here, you know, MQ series, job queue depth, CPU, uh, disk space, um, interactive response time. Uh, Chuck, any other thing that, I mean, there's just so yeah. many things. Yeah. Journaling. Yeah, exactly. Object size, real-time object size. So for instance, tracking your uh, journal receiver collection and you know, it's something that uh, we're going to talk about and you know the point I want to make about this Tom is that these metrics are highly configurable right so you know for instance I mentioned object size so you know if that's something you want to look at you could tell us to look at all your journal receivers in a particular library or across all your libraries Right. We want to get to that live demo, so let's keep rolling yeah. along here, Chuck. Yeah. So here's just some examples, Tom, that uh, we talk to folks about when they're looking at potentially implementing this tool. Yeah. Uh, and they want to know where to start. So how about putting some monitoring around batch jobs? So we're talking, obviously, CPU utilization, queue time, jobs held on job queues, jobs waiting to run, average wait time, max wait time, and so forth. Maybe uh, would like to put some uh, metrics around communications and around particular ports that are communicating either to your network or out to your SAN, for instance. How about JDBC, ODBC monitoring? That seems to be number one on everybody's list. CPU utilization. It's a big is invisible item on the system, isn't it? Exactly. Disk performance, object size, I mentioned that, replication status various system status metrics and good goodness don't forget about bios if uh, you're in that uh, environment as well bios kind of sits in the background but uh, you know it's one of those things we need to monitor and then there's 
dashboards. Everybody loves dashboards. And so we allow not only highly configurable monitoring, but highly configurable dashboards. So these dashboards can contain all the various metrics that are important to the people who need to see them, and they can be combined from multiple partitions and multiple platforms. And then likewise, the notifications. So if you do have some type of CPU threshold event that's focused on a particular workload, you can drill down directly into that and see what is consuming um, uh, resources. And if there is uh, an SQL workload uh, associated with that, you can drill into that. And if it's a JDBC, ODBC type connection, you can actually see what IP address that's coming from. Very good. And then, you know, let's not forget about AIX and BIOS. So BIOS is basically a form of the AIX operating system. So while we did that, we thought, well, let's bring in AIX too, because after all, people have um, customers that are, or they have AIX alongside IBMI. So this gives us the ability to do real-time monitoring um, with a similar set of statistics or in, um, what do you want to call it? Metrics, but different because we're talking AIX. So you know, instead of jobs, you're going to be doing process monitoring in the AX world. Instead of disk storage, you might be looking at file systems and file sizes. Um, so uh, then we also have the Linux metrics. So we can take and manage the Linux for you too, which is very, very similar. We have customers that have Linux on power and uh, they wanted to extend the robot monitor that. So we can, we can manage that environment, whether it's running SAP HANA or you know, whatever you may be doing on Linux, uh, we certainly can bring those things in too with, you know, file system, CPU, disk-based, I.O., you know, total number of processes, things like that, so. Yeah, and just a quick point about AIX and Linux would be, you know, it's it's AIX, Linux, and IBM I all running on power. Yes, on power. Right. Yeah. So, Chuck, I think we want to do a live demo now. Are you ready right. for that? I certainly am. Let's... Uh... Let's, Let's start out it. first of all. Okay, so this what looks you like. Do, Tom? Well, this is the hard thing here. This looks like you got a PowerPoint slide, but I know this is the live thing. So combine, I want you to combine real time monitoring for IBM I with VIOS and Linux or AIX. Yeah. So what okay, do you have? So let's start. Yeah, let's start by combining a bunch of different uh, partitions just into one view, for instance. So this is a dashboard, and what you're looking at is the robot monitor GUI. And uh, uh, the menu system up here in the left-hand side shows dashboards, systems and groups, and then threshold activity and configurations down below. So we're in a dashboard called All Systems. Um, and uh, so what you see here are my five IBMI partitions. I'm looking at uh, auxiliary storage, DASD. I'm looking at QTAMP size. I'm looking at CPU utilization. You can see one of my partitions um, uh, is a little bit high. And uh, notice it's easy to see. All right, we've color coded it red. It just jumps right out. Here we've got uptime for my IBM I partitions, current processor, current memory. But then down below, you'll see Linux. I've got my Banks and Bell Linux partitions. And then I've got my BIOS partitions, BIOS 1 and BIOS 2. All right, so um, I've got all this on a single dashboard. I could have multiple dashboards. Okay, so I've got, for instance, my Linux and IBM I dashboard, uh, IBM I and BIOS dashboard. Okay, so I can combine them different ways. Likewise, you can group uh, partitions together. All right, so down in my systems and groups, you can see I have my single system view. We're gonna look at my academy partition quite a bit today. But for instance, I've grouped some partitions together. Here's my two production partitions, academy and Guinevere. All right, and I've got various metrics displayed for them. And then likewise, uh, I might want to look at my uh, Linux partition. So I've grouped those together. Very right. cool. So various Very ways cool. to combine things together. Tom, what's next? Well, you know, at the high level, right, people want to be able to do what you just got done, done doing. But let's say you have uh, critical jobs, job queues, subsystems, some operational checks that you've been doing in the past from the green screen or manually. Uh, can you drill into that area? Sure. So let's start with a dashboard and then we'll look at how things are configured. But uh, here's, a, here's a dashboard I call production and it's looking at some metrics, CPU, batch CPU. You can see we've got a batch CPU uh, crisis going on here on Academy a, a little bit, auxiliary storage and so forth. So these are 
the 30 second metrics that Tom was mentioning. Uh, and then we've got some threshold information here. And uh, every 30 seconds when we're collecting these metrics, we're also collecting what jobs are consuming the most CPU, disk IO, highest response time, and so forth. But from, you know, from an administrator standpoint, you're tasked with, okay, are certain jobs supposed to be running and there are certain job queues that need to be monitored and so forth. So just a quick example would be subsystem status. You've got critical subsystems. And um, on, in my production world, uh, Academy and Guinevere, I've got certain subsystems identified that I need to monitor. And I've got a couple of them that are down. I've got my AT monitor and my uh, Q programmer subsystem here on my Academy partition that aren't active and obviously that. But here we've got the ability to actually start subsystems inside the GUI. So all I did was right click, I can say start, end and so forth. All right, and I can change my monitoring properties. All right, so that's um, from a dashboard standpoint, that's one way you can approach things. Okay, now let's just look at a single system. Let's look at my uh, Academy partition here for a second. And uh, let's look at how we can go about monitoring some of this. So let's, first of all, let's look at what we've got set up for monitoring. And this out. So what you see on the right hand side, these are all the various monitors that we have configured. Uh, and you'll see that I've got hundreds and hundreds of, of monitors. But for instance, one is job status. All right. So I've got a whole bunch of different uh, job status monitors set up that are looking at a particular job, looking at a particular job in a particular subsystem. So like I said, it's highly um, you can qualify things uh, quite a bit and customize them to your needs. So when we're saying uh, we want to monitor, for instance, the, the BRMS uh, network uh, job, my data collection looks like this. I'm looking at a monitor type of job status and I'm simply specifying the job name. All right. Or for instance, let's look at uh, subsystem status. All right, here's our subsystem status uh, that we're looking at. So we'll be able to set up the monitoring of all these various subsystems and have them uh, notify us if one of those subsystems is not active or we can put that information on, um, on a dashboard. Job queue status, all right? We've got job queue, active job count, average wait time, job queue count, max wait time, and job queue status, all right? So here's here's something I want to do real quick, Tom. I want to okay. if I wanted to set up a, a bunch of jobs to be monitored. All right, I could do something like this. I could simply say monitor something new, and uh, let's put in a subsystem. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to say uh, let's look at all the jobs in RBT Sleeper. Okay. All right. So here's all the jobs that are running in RBT Sleeper. So what I can do is I can say I want to select certain jobs to be monitored, all right? These are my critical jobs, for instance, all okay. right? So just by selecting them like that, and if I say, okay, Robot Monitor will automatically set up all the monitors required to monitor those jobs to make sure they're active, all right? Hmm. And if they're not, we will see something like this in our view, all right? So we've got some jobs here that aren't active, all right? You can see says not active when I hover on the job. And of course, we're getting external notification on that as well. Yeah, and you think about that, that's handy for, let's say you have a production server and you have a target server that you're using for high availability. We could be monitoring both sides uh, for the critical jobs that need to be running to make sure that your HA is up and running. And, you know, really this, you know, I was thinking about as you're showing me this, Chuck, it's, it's, it's all about making it easier for those who maybe don't know as much about IBM I too. That's a really powerful thing right. here. Speaking yeah. of yeah. don't know, <clears throat> how about monitoring JDBC, ODBC type processes, you know, Q, Z, D, O, S, O, NIT jobs that yeah. have problems with? What can you do there? Yeah, okay. So uh, in my single system view, uh, I've got, we'll look at this first, and then we'll jump into a dashboard. But I set up some monitors to look at uh, CPU for uh, QZDA, SO, and NET, and also secure JDBC, QZDA, SS, and NET. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick off a workload 
All right, I've got an SQL workload here that I'm going to run. And we're going to see what the effects are uh, in the monitoring. All right. Believe me, Chuck loves causing problems on the system. So let's we go. <clears throat> okay. Right up your alley. We're going to let, we're going to let that run. And then we're going to look at how we set this up. So uh, some of the metrics that I'd recommend, JDBC faulting, JDBC QTemp, uh, temp storage, number of JDBC jobs. And uh, just for instance, I've got another workload here. It says JDBC temp storage. All right. So what constitutes that? We can drill into the monitoring and we can see, all right, we've got a JDBC connection that's consuming uh, two gigs of storage, external storage, uh, or temporary storage, I should say. And uh, so if I want to drill into that, I could simply say, let's let's do that. And actually, I think this takes care of the next, uh, the next bullet point, too, about drill down. Right, right. All right. So... What, what I just did is I was able to drill into the work job information, all right? I can see information about that job while it's active, library list, call stack, open files, and the SQL information, all right? So from a, a, a temp storage monitoring, no, no issue there. We've got that covered. Now here we've got a JDBC uh, a CPU workload going on, all right? And so let's drill into that. All right, so we've got this job here, once again, that job that I kicked off from my uh, Windows desktop just a second ago. Let's work with that. Okay, so we know that there's some SQL information associated with that, so I can drill down immediately into that. I can see the SQL statement and the IP address. I can also take action, change, hold, release, end. I could drill into the job log from this interface, all right? So I can take action on this immediately if I need to, uh, uh, all through the GUI interface. You can see I haven't been to a, a green screen interface yet. And while we're here and talking about drill down, we've had this CPU utilization issue going on since we started the webinar, all right? So that's kind of typical. You know, you get that call uh, maybe after the fact that, you know, something's going on with the system and it's been happening for a while. So you need to, your job is to go back and figure out what that is, all right? So with the drill down capability and monitor, I can drill down into the past, the past couple hours, the past couple days, the past couple weeks, the past couple months. It all depends on how long you wanna keep your data around. But you can see right, uh, right around here, it looks like uh, 8.47 this morning, uh, a workload was submitted onto the system, all right? And it's still consuming resources. All right, so I can drill into that. And what you'll see is every 30 seconds, not only are we collecting the metrics, we're also collecting what jobs are consuming the most CPU, the most disk IO, the worst response time, or maybe just due to SQL. So what you're looking at here is uh, from 8.51 this morning, uh, there's this big bad job. All right, and it's the, the guy that's consuming the most CPU on the system. And once again, I can work with that job and I can end it if, if I need to, all right? I can take action on that and I can drill into the job log and do some diagnostics and so forth, all right? So that historical perspective is, is so important. All right, Tom, how are we doing? You're doing great. You know, I was just thinking again while you're doing this live demo. I mean, one of the challenges people always have is just getting start with the product, getting these metrics in and, and navigating. So, I mean, I, I think about services or just a little help watching something like this is, is really beneficial. But, you know, another area people ask often about is library and IFS storage and being able to see that daily, real time, historically. Um, how does uh, Robot Monitor handle that area? Okay, a couple different ways. So you could do things in terms of real-time monitoring around your storage. And of course, things like auxiliary storage, that's pretty obvious, you wanna monitor that. Or IASP storage, you'll wanna monitor that. And that's, that's real-time. In the product, we can also monitor uh, library storage, all right? So for instance, I could say, I wanna look at all my libraries on the system and I just want to know what the li largest library is at any particular point in time. Or maybe there's certain objects that I want to look at in my library. So here's an example. Uh, I've got one set up just to look at journal receivers across my environment. 
All right, so let's look at that. So my data collection on that says, I wanna look at largest library, but basically I wanna look at all my libraries, but just at journal receiver objects. So what library contains the most journal receiver objects in terms of size? All right, so let's drill into the details on that. And it says my, my odd journal lib contains the most in terms of journal receivers. Q recovery is second. Tom, you're down here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that's that's an example of just saying, add up all my objects in these libraries and tell me what library is taking the most room. You can be more specific. We also have an object size monitor, all right? So for instance, I could look at a particular library just for journal receivers, all right? Um, another view that we have of storage is a once a day disk summary. And what this does is it looks at all your IFS directories and all your libraries, and it gives you a point in time picture of uh, what that looks like. All right, so here's my 10 largest libraries on the system. And likewise, I can look at the, my 10 largest directories. We'll do that next. But I could say, okay, for the my average for the month of December for my QPFR data, looks like this, uh, 19 gigs. And uh, if I looked at it now, I drilled down into the month of December, here's where my QPFR data uh, was for every day in December, all right? And I could say, let's look at this from a yearly view. Where was QPFR data uh, maybe a year ago, all right? So in January uh, of 2021, it was at 20 gigs. Here's my averages for every month, right? That's really right. nice. And, and likewise, we can drill into directories and you know do the same kind of navigation. You know, what's the lar what are my 10 largest uh, directories or you could select a directory to look at, where have those directories been over time? And uh, uh, you know, give you a fighting chance at finding where you, you could maybe save some storage. All right. Tom, I think we better have our follow-up polling question. That sounds good. You know, I'm looking at this list right here going, hmm, we got a couple of things we could clean up on our own system right there. So, all right, let me open up, you know, the, the last <laughs> polling question and uh, how can help systems help you? Um, as usual, we'd certainly like to follow up. I'd like to learn more about Robot Monitor or you own Robot Monitor. And after seeing what Chuck did, you're like, wow, I could maybe use some services. Uh, we have an option down below to help you out with that. You want a demo of Robot Monitor? Um, I want to, uh, I'd like to get a start started on a proof of concept. Uh, we certainly can help you with that. And, you know, with that, we'll help you set up some of your own monitors and, and get it on multiple partitions, for example. Or maybe uh, you already have owned the product for a while or some other robot product for a while, and you don't feel like you're getting what you need out of it. We do robot health checks, and that's something that we do. And then of course, I talked about services already, and, and you know, not listed here, Chuck. Uh, something else we do. We just do a lot of just technology overviews with customer, and everything Help Systems does these days because our world's changed. We have um, done a few acquisitions over the, over the years, and uh, 37 acquisitions to be exact. And you may not know how much we could help you with your other servers too, besides things that are related on power. Um, we certainly have capacity planning, VM monitoring type tools for the non IBMI world, even the non, you know, power servers too. So those yeah. are all things to think about. And I'd highly recommend a health check, you know, pick, pick, a, pick a product that you use and maybe that you're just not familiar with or you're not sure what it's doing or if you're not sure it's doing enough. Um, or uh, maybe it's just critical to your organization and you want to make sure it's healthy. That's what, that's what the health check is all about. So Sounds uh, good. You know, I guess we've got time yep. maybe for one question, Chuck, and and that is, um, you, you, we kind of glossed over PowerHA, but what, what can you monitor in PowerHA? Yeah, so we do have some options for monitoring um, the uh, uh, cluster resource group, the cluster, basically monitoring the status of PowerHA. Is it up and running uh, on, on your source and your target? Right. Oh, so I'll, I'll take one. I'm going to offend the, the one question. We have time for another one. There's another one that came in here. What about building your own monitors? Can we do anything there? 
Oh, like somebody has question. something they want to yeah. customize and do. What what can they yeah, do? Yeah, yeah. We've actually did a separate webinar on that, but you do have the ability to embed ask your own SQL statements into our monitors. So if there's something specific you want to monitor, like for instance, number of IP version four connections on a particular port, guess what? We could do that. Ah, okay. That's okay. a good one. That's we'll a good one. That you your own. Yep. Well. What can we say, but uh, have a, a very good end of the year. And uh, do you think of help systems at all for backup and recovery HA, automation, monitoring, security, document management, business intelligence? We can help you with all those things centered around IBM I and uh, AIX and Linux and, and even out into the Windows world when you think about everything else that we do. Uh, well, thank you again, Chuck. As, as always, a pleasure doing a webinar with you. and. Uh, I guess we'll sign off with a little video view just to remind you guys. Oh, there's your, you took your hat off. I still have my robot beanie on. If I pull it off, my hair is going to be standing straight up in the air. So anyways, have a wonderful yeah. day. Everybody have a great uh, holiday season. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.